Hello and welcome to this short tutorial of one of the new features in Hexographer 2 slash Worldographer. Uh, I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program, and uh, this will go over the new map key configuration functionality, which has been in Hexographer, but was a pesky thing to write the first time, so I had been putting off writing it in Hexographer 2. Um, let's see, to get started, we're going to start with a, making a simple map. Um, if you haven't used Hexographer or Hexographer 2 before, um, there's another video that we have. Uh, look for the links that go over this in a lot of detail. We're just going to go ahead and say generate map to get a quick map here. And there we go. Uh, I'm going to adjust the sizes here. We've got a reduced screen size here for video recording purposes. Um, but here you can see what the what the world looks like overall. Um, what we need to do, uh, so the map key configuration tool kind of automates creating the map key for you and it looks at all the terrain being used in your map and kind of pre-populates the map key information with that. But it also does the same thing for features, which are our city icons and village icons and so forth. And um, uh, so we want to add some of those to the map. And we've got a large collection of those and a couple of different styles built into the program. If you use, uh, if you're familiar with the old Mistara maps, uh, these are the icons that are similar to those. So I kind of default to, to using those. Um, but we can just plop a few of these down here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go to shapes because it will also um, have the map key will also have the line styles and the uh, border styles and so forth that we might be using on the map. Uh, if I click river, it's going to preset everything to be uh, like a river, the colors and the width and so forth. So I just click and place it there on the map and say if I want a second one, go ahead and do this. Um, Anyway, I'm not really trying to make sense of the map. I'm really just trying to get some information down quickly um, so that we can move on to the map key information. So let me do a road and let me also do a border. Um, I'm just going to set this to be no fill and solid red, kind of like the old Mastara style borders would be. And I just uh, click these. Now you can set these to snap to the points of the hexagons as well and go point, click each individual point for each hexagon if you wish. Um, you can also do it with a line, um, but I just chose to do it with a polygon here. So now that we've created a few shapes, uh, I'm going to go up here to tools. And we're going to go to map key, configure map key here on tools. Now, this is something that I'm still fit polishing up. There's still a couple of bugs to deal with, um, but you can kind of see what, you know, what is here, what works. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to turn on the map key if you're going through all the trouble of configuring the map key, and you want to set it to either be at, on the right of the map or below the map. We'll set it to be on the right. Um, you could change the title to whatever you want. We'll leave that as um, map key. We'll say each hex is equal to 30 miles, um, whatever you wanted it to be. You can write that in for the scale. Um, here on the, you could set the size uh, for each, each font uh, for the title, the scale, and each entry. Um, this is a percentage of the hex height to set the font size. Um, one gotcha here is that you'll want to if you type in the number, you'll want to hit enter so it takes effect. That's something that we're still polishing and working on and applying that to all the all the selectors, all the number spinners, if you will, in Hexographer. Um, now, now we can move on to the terrain. And if you want to change the label, for example, if you don't like flat. So what, what it's using here for the labels are the keys that the system uses for each terrain type. If you don't like the word flat, for example, you can just delete it from each one. Um, order. If you want to change the order, so now if you've changed the, the alphabetization of everything, um, you can change one and then lower the other one. You will need to have one and only one of each number, otherwise you'll only get, you know, if you set two things to three, um, then you only get one of those two appearing in the map key that, that gets created for you. Also, if you want to remove anything here, you're going to want to set it to zero. If you set it to zero, it won't show up in the map key that gets created. 
So we can continue tweaking all those values. Uh, the color selectors here are the, def are the default color for that terrain type. If you want to change it to something else for some reason, you can. Um, here are the settlements, uh, the different features that we had added. We have a camp and a capital and a city. And likewise, you know, if you don't want them to be all prefaced with the word settlement, you can drop that. Um, you can change the order. You can change the size of the icon. Uh, the, again, these are percentages of the hex height to use. Um, if one of these things was a uh, water feature, like whaling or fishing area or shipwreck, you can set the color to be in blue in order to kind of get that point across. And then finally down here on the bottom, we've got the border, the river, and the road. And those are based on the tags. So let me slide this over a little bit as we can probably still see it. Yeah, so here in the tags field, when we did the presets, it set the tag for that, for the last thing I was working on to border. And so that's why it's using that as the key and the default label um, for each of these shapes. So we can capitalize each one of them. Um, if there's some other terrain that's not on the map yet, you know, it goes through and it figures out all the terrain that's on the map and pre-populates all that data. But if there's something else you know you're going to be adding, a flat beach, for example, you know that you're going to be putting that on, then you can add it and it will appear as a new row right there in number 30 since there's 29 things already in there. Same thing for feature. Um, if there's some other feature that you know you're going to be working with, you can go ahead and add it, click OK, and then we'll have that new feature here. So this was an elf castle. <clears throat> um, down here on the bottom, if, uh, if you've already created the map key, um, but you've changed the map quite a bit, you can clear everything out and update it. If you only wanted to add new things that you've added, but you don't want it to change anything that, that you've already included in the map key, you would update entries. Keep labels. Uh, this checkbox, uh, if you've, if you've um, set up these labels and renamed everything the way you want them, and you don't want the update to affect that, you would check keep labels. Um, reorder um, will cause it, you know, if that's checked, it will cause everything to re-alphabetize and, and, and set up the numbers based on, on the current labels. So that's that. So we click OK, and now we have to get to it. Now, one of the bugs, as I said, I'm still kind of working on this. This has been released in its current state, um, but because it's been taking a while, I wanted to get something out there. Um, so it doesn't yet have anything. Um, it doesn't yet include uh, the area for the map that's to the right of the map using the scroll bar. But if you pan here with this up here in the mini map, if you pan here, then you'll get all that information spelled out for us. And here you can see those additional things, the beach, the roads, the rivers, and so forth. So that's a quick overview of the new mini map or the new um, map configure map key configuration. Um, as I said, you know, it's not quite done yet, um, but I wanted to get it out there to kind of, um, you know, since it had been a while since we had done a release, and uh, you know, in the next week or two, we'll be doing another release where we polish up some of those things and uh, move on to uh, wrapping up some other features that, we, that, that we've got to do. I think that's about all. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me for any bugs or uh, any comments, any suggestions, uh, the best way is to email me at support at inkwellideas.com. Uh, also, we check our forum and we'll be checking the comments here, but email is always best because it just uh, sometimes becomes difficult to keep up with uh, seven different places for people to contact us. Uh, thank you very much and I uh, hope, uh, hope, uh, hope you create some cool maps.